Hello, my name is Frederik Steinmetz and welcome to my tutorial for aetutsplus.com and today we'll have a look at sound-driven animations that means I'm using any song that I drop into After Effects, analyzing it with After Effects and then linking my animation to the amplitude of the sound. I'm using particular for this but you can also use the principle on any sound driven animation that you create and let you show me what I'm talking about this is the first example where the the amplitude will just increase the size of these rings that are produced and the second example is this one where the sound is producing these bubbles and we have a for loop in order to analyze the previous two frames and the next two frames and check if the amplitude changes comparing to the current frame to prevent these bubbles from intersecting and since this is pretty complicated we have a lot to do and let's get started I have a new After Effects project with just this WAV file in it so I have to create a new composition and this is actually all the external data we need we don't need any JPEGs or downloaded stuff anyways let's call this rings because we're going to make the golden rings that you saw earlier and also we'll make a new comp control N and call this the ring particle because we're going to use a custom particle and that doesn't need to be more than 300 by 300 pixels big and let's just select the ellipse tool and hold shift and draw a perfect circle it doesn't matter how big it is because we're going to modify this later on okay now drop the diamonds wave in here and my composition is only eight seconds long but I don't care we, I don't need more for this tutorial. You can make this composition as long as you want. To. It'll work on anything. Let's uh, right click on the diamonds wave and select keyframe assistant convert audio to keyframes. And that will create our null with the three channels on it. Let's delete those two channels by just switching off the, the stopwatch next to the slider and press U to hide them. And press U again to reveal the one that's left. And if you scrub through here you can see our values are between 1 and 11. I'll press um, the star on my numpad to add a marker here and I'll press S while I'm on this shape layer to reveal the scale property. I'll click on the stopwatch and just drag this over to the slider. And as before, if you've watched my previous tutorial, the slider will compensate that this is an array by using both those values for both X and Y, X and Y scale. Actually I do want this to be like that so I'll just modify this a little by saying um, the one slider, the circle we had earlier, the biggest, that should be my one. So I should um, probably, since this is 11, I'll probably just multiply this by 10. So I'll just type in star 10. So this way, if I have a look at my at my um, scrub through the timeline, I can see I can see that my circle is there's actually parts where it's outside of the screen. So I'll just I'll just make this smaller. It doesn't matter. We'll we'll have more control over the particles once we're back in particular. Okay, that looks good. Let's just make sure it doesn't go out of the screen. Okay, that should do. You can also use a function and check for the max value over by scrubbing through the timeline. Let's just assume it's 10. And then you can say that um, our actual value, let's call it val because I if you call it value, uh, it won't give you any error message, but it won't work. And that is because value is a reserved word, a reserved string. It means the current value of your keyframe or of your function. And 
it just uh, I tried this earlier with speed accidentally and it didn't give me any error message whatsoever it just didn't work so I started using abbreviations for everything now, value will be abbreviated with val and now I'll say value equals linear and um, now we have to take the value that we actually want to use and that is our temp and this value will be modified by pressing comma and saying 0 that's the minimum value 11 that's the maximum value from our from our uh, audio analysis comma 0 that's the minimum of the converted range and 100 and that means in short we have a variable the temp and we have the first range from 0 to 11 and it will be converted to the range from 0 to 100. For example, if this was 0 to 10, then a 1 would be 10 and a 2 would be 20. So it just takes this range and interpolates it so it fits this range. So in no way are we going to have a value bigger than 100. And then if you see our circle, we draw it, we drew it earlier, it was inside the inside the comp, uh, inside the boundaries here, so we just made sure that no value greater than 100 exists for the scale, so it won't escape our bounds at all, at all times. Okay, now that we're sure of that, let's go over to our rings composition and create a new solid. New solid will be called rings color doesn't matter because particular replaces it for you and I usually use red solids if I use particular and if you scrub forward you can see the typical particular starting settings I don't think anyone has ever used them for anything so let's modify them first of all I want only sorry I want only 25 particles per second that means one particle per frame and also I want the position of the emitter to travel across the screen so I'll alt click on the stopwatch and say x equals time times 50 50 would be the speed of the travel and I explained this earlier but 50 means two pixels per frame will be our center shift in, in x direction and for the y I'll type in value 1 this means we still have control over the y value with our slider and actually let's leave it at that and then I have to com c confirm that x and y are the two single pieces of my array enter and you can see it travels across the screen very slowly let's increase that a little and it travels across the screen very nice and if I want to change the Y position of the entire thing I can still use my slider that works fine now let's modify the particle itself and for this we have to drop our ring ring particle into this composition and shut it off and I'll have the particle type first of all let's increase the life because we don't want them to die at all and this will be the texture polygon and I will choose the texture be the ring particle of course and the time sampling I'll put to current frame freeze and the good thing about that is After Effects will check at what what our ring particle looks like at the current time so it'll look like this and it will create a particle that looks exactly like our ring in this frame and the particle will stay this size for the rest of its life so let's shut this off I hope this was clear to understand if not I'll just um, demonstrate I'll turn down the velocity random disper dispersion and everything to zero so my rings will just be sitting there you can see them here and let's increase the size of the rings a lot 
so we can see what we're doing. Okay, the rings are now pointing towards the camera. And uh, while this may look interesting, I don't want it for now. So I'll just rotate it around the Y axis by 90 degrees. I'm sorry, I rotated the emitter. And since the emitter is 0, 0, 0, it doesn't matter in which direction you rotate it. What you have to do is you rotate your particle by 90 degrees around the y-axis. And now you can see we get this tube-shaped thing, which is getting very close to what we want. I'll add a new camera and press C, so I can rotate around this. We have one little shortcoming, and that is our particle has no depth, so it's not extruded, and I don't think there is a way to extrude it. But if we so it, w what this means is if the particles are absolutely parallel to the camera they will become invisible and we can work around that by never going in a 90 degree angle from the camera if we wanted that we can just use something else like the uh, built-in audio analyzers from after effects we wouldn't need particular for that so i'll just rotate this so it points away from the camera you can also have it pointed towards the camera whatever you like and if you see if you watch this you can see that my particles my sound is producing different sized particles and I have to drop the diamonds wave in here again because sometimes it gets some issues if you use the wave file that is attached to this one so I'll just mute that and drop in the diamonds wave for us and um, Let's just preview this. I'll press the tilde key to make this in full screen, zoom in so our particles look smooth and let's preview. And you can see it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. What I did in the preview was just um, put a glow effect on there. Let's add it to the rings actually. And there you go, it's starting to glow. Let's leave it at that because the other example I want to show you is a lot more complicated actually. So I'll save this, create a new comp and call it spheres. We're going more and more 3D. Press Ctrl K because this was not HD TV and we can change the settings. Let's create a new new um, solid again and call this particles sphere Call it whatever you want. And again, use the particular effect because it is one of the most elegant ways to analyze audio. Form has the built-in, but um, if you're if you're familiar with um, with expressions, I think you can do beautiful things with particular and sound. And no, I'm not being paid by neither Trapcord nor Red Giant software to say that. I just really like the thing. So let's drop our diamonds wave in again and select keyframe assistant convert audio to keyframe again of course I get the audio amplitude and again I'll disable the left and right channel sliders and press U, U twice don't press it too fast or it will trade it as a U double click and show every property that you've ever changed in the audio amplitude this can be very handy at sometimes but now we don't need it and again if I scrub through this we have the little dots flying and I want to modify this entirely so first I'll go to the emitter and I'm going to copy paste this expression for the X position again I wanted to travel across the screen and uh, the easiest way to do that without keyframes is this it's traveling again, working fine. Again, turn down this velocity to zero. And the particle size, turn that down to one, because we want to have really nice smooth particles later on. And then let's write an expressions for expression for the particles per second. And this one's going to be a bit more complicated. So let's start off with the a little more simple expression for the velocity. I'll click on the stopwatch next to the velocity and start typing. I'll have a variety that I'll call last and last is the value of the last keyframe. So let's make some space. 
yes I get it and um, let's press U here so to hide the big rat tail that we got make some space here and after the last use the pick whip to pick whip the audio slider and this expression here created by the pick whip is the current value of the slider but I want the value of the last frame and that one I get by a dot value at time and then in, in parentheses we put the time and we want the last frame and that would be time the current time minus and then the this comp dot frame duration so from the current time it will subtract one frame and if we want to check this yeah I just found out I made two dots here of course that's wrong and if we check this value is 1.2 now and if I scribe forward one frame pressing the page down key you can see that this value will be represented here and it's working fine every value this last variable will have the value of the last frame of the audio amplitude which is exactly what we want now let's use this we'll use a threshold variable so I'll just use the abbreviation thresh and this one will be our current value so just pick whip it and then we'll have a third var variable and I'll call it vel for velocity and right now the velocity should be zero now I want to check if and then open parentheses very important the if argument must always be in parentheses I want to check if my threshold is bigger than two because if our audio is really quiet and it's below two I don't want the particles to react at all this is my first um, argument and also and if I want to add another one I'll have to tell after effects that by, by assigning two and signs that just means and and I want to check if the threshold means the current value is bigger than the last one so we'll only increase the velocity if the current value was bigger than the last because if the if the um, the volume of the sound is falling we don't need a velocity increase so right now we're checking is the velocity increasing or is the amplitude of the audio increasing and if that is the case we want our threshold uh, sorry our velocity to be the threshold and I tried with I toyed around with this earlier and I found 30 to be a good number but you feel free to use whatever number you want and then close these brackets and just tell After Effects that the the value of the velocity is supposed to be the val that we created earlier and can't really see it I can see the mistake I used the pick whip to actually pick whip the audio amplitude null object but we need to pick whip to the slider and now you see whenever the whenever the amplitude will go above 2 our particles will get a speed and that is um, roughly what we want but we still want a lot more changes than that of course first of all turn up turn up the air resistance so our particles will stop after a while and that is in the physics options and in the air the air resistance let's just turn this up so we can see little bubbles forming okay bubbles are starting to look better let's turn down the size of the particle to one or actually for testing let's keep it at two but um, so we can still see them and increase the life if you want to actually let, let's leave it at let's leave it at three for now now this is going to be the most complicated expression of the tutorial yet I'll all click on the stopwatch for the particles because the particles are essential here if I want to produce those bigger spheres I can I have to use a lot of particles but only if there's sound so 
if nothing's happening, no, if there's silence, I still want this little line to be present, so I'll call it a new variable particles, and that one equals 100. This is if nothing happens. Then again we have the threshold, and of course, and I'll just pick whip the threshold from the slider, and I forgot an equal sign, and then I'll have a do it, do it. My do it is supposed to be zero and that will make sense later because this will be the trigger whether the number of the particles should be changed or not. And then I'll write a loop and these loops are very important especially if you use the scripting later on, the JavaScript files that are supposed to place objects in your scene. If you use the for loop you can, pro you can place numerous ob objects in your scene with varying values or properties by just using a simple loop like three four lines and you can create a thousand objects but more on that later first of all our loop needs a variable that is counted and for that I'll just uh, say that there's a variable i and right now it's zero then I have a aborting condition the loop should not be longer than i is smaller than, let's say, 3. That means 3 times. Once for i is 0, once for i is 1, and once for i is 3. And 3 is not smaller than 3 anymore, so this loop will run exactly 3 times. And then I also have to tell the program how many steps, how big one step is. So I'll just type in i++, and that means i plus 1 one step is one value. So every time the loop rolls, i will be increased by one. And that's what the two pluses are saying. And then again, I use these open brackets for the functions, and I'll type in the same expression that I used over here with my, my last. So I'll just copy paste that. I don't have to I don't have to um, do it again, so the difference will be that this time every frame this last will be checked three times and um, if I want to check three times I have to check of course different times because otherwise I'll just be uh, comparing the same values over and over so I'll insert over here an i times one frame and that means in the first loop it will check the current time because time minus zero times one frame is the current time in the second one it will check the last frame and in the third one it will check the frame from two frames ago and this is what our last does and let's create another another if if the threshold meaning the uh, current value so actually we don't need this to be zero I just realized it's it's enough if this is one because we don't need the thresh to be compared with the thresh it wouldn't make that much sense and if the threshold is bigger than the last, meaning, in other words, bigger than the last three frames, I want my do it to be increased by one. And my do it is the counter. And only if the threshold is bigger than two, because that's our overall threshold in this comp, only then I want something to happen. And also, so and and, only if the do it, it is bigger than 2, then I want my particles to be changed and the particle amount will equal the threshold, meaning the slider value, to the power of 3 times 200. And that is written by math.pow for power and then the value that you want to power and then the amount. So this would equal threshold to the power of 3. And this is not enough, so I'll multiply this with 200. And the reason we're using the, the threshold to the power of 3 is if the, if the slider value is only 3, then we get 3 to the power of 3, 27 particles. But if the power is much higher, like 100, uh, like 10, then we get a thousand particles. So I only want very many particles if my slider is very high. And if my slider is very low, I don't need that many particles. So in order not to have this a linear function, 
I'm using the threshold to the power of 3 times 200 in order to modify the particle amount. Now we have to close these parentheses and uh, then we are done. All we need to do is tell After Effects which, which variable to use for the uh, resulting value. And I forgot one of those closing parentheses and I think it's right over here. This is one of the reasons why you might wanna why you might wanna use these in the indent text. So we can see this belongs to this one, this belongs to this one, and so on. And even if you do that, you're still not safe. Let me check where that error was. Yeah, I spelled the do it with a without the capital I. So let me check where that was. There it is. Do it. There we go, no mistakes. And now you see we have the nice bubbles going. And um, these bubbles can now be modified a little. I can turn down the life of the particles to 1.5 and the size to 1. Also, I don't really like this color, so I make it a light blue and turn the transfer mode to add. And these are all just... Uh, not so important um, differences for this tutorial. Let's check this. And you can see our particles are disappearing really rapidly as soon as the as they die. We can make this a lot more smooth by going into the opacity over life and draw a nice fade out curve like this. Make it not as steep and not as low something like this. That should do fine. We still have those three spheres left even though we have the checking function over here. The reason why we still have them left is this only checks backwards. So if you have a look at the at the values over here, well this is where the function steps over the threshold. 6.9 is the first time this gets activated and it releases a lot of particles. Next step, it's still bigger than the last step and the next step is even bigger and then it starts declining again so we get three spheres that are one frame apart this is because this function only checks the last frames but we can with a simple modification we can make it check the last two frames and the next two frames and with that we have only one sphere every four frames the most so let's set this to minus two and that means it will check first the next two frames because minus minus equals plus so two times the next frame and then the one the other one will be minus one so the next one frame then itself doesn't matter because it says here truly bigger than not equal and bigger and then it will check the positive values meaning since we're subtracting here the last two two frames we don't need five frames to be checked anymore let's make this three and um, let's see what there we go we only have one bubble left so if I ramp preview this again I will make this full screen ramp preview there you go bubbles all right that concludes my tutorial for for loops and particular Stay tuned for the next time when I place objects on the screen by using their index so they automatically get placed in the right position like in these bars. Those are all one single object with four lines of, codes of code and they all place themselves exactly where they're supposed to be. And you can see there's a fall off. Usually if you just hook the position of the sound to something in After Effects it will just jump around wildly like this. But here you can see a fall off. It's going, it's reducing itself slowly compared to this one. And how to do this, we're going to have a look the next time. I hope you tune in. If you like this, leave a comment and thanks for watching. This was Frederik Steinmetz for aetutsplus.com.